Welcome, Lee here from Play Guitar Academy with another Why They Work Lick video. Today is for the beginners. If you're starting to play blues, you don't know what to play, nothing you play sounds right, you're in the right place. I have the 10 licks that you need to get up and running fast. Not only that, I'm going to let you know why each of them works as we go through them. That way you're not mindlessly copying licks, you're gonna understand them and they will become yours to use in many different situations. But if you're one of those players that's only comfortable playing in one or two scale patterns, I'm here to tell you you're headed for a rut. If you wanna make sure that you keep moving steadily forward with lead guitar, you're gonna to need to start unlocking the fretboard today. I have a link for you here and in the description to download my free Big Four Scale Pattern Worksheet so you can aim your learning in the right direction and start feeling comfortable playing all over the fretboard like I do. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the licks. We are mostly using the minor pentatonic scale pattern number one, with a couple other cool things thrown in. Here it is. You can also play this one in the open position as well too, and it looks like this. Okay, let's go over this cool lick. This is in a lot of songs, and I'm gonna go through the lick first, and then I'll explain why each thing works. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our first finger. We're gonna bar the top two strings at the 12th fret. So the high E string and the B string, we're gonna push those both down with our first finger. And then we're gonna take our second finger across here, and we're gonna put it down on the 13th fret of the G string. So three strings played here. Now this shape may look familiar if you know your open position E major chord, it's like the top three strings of that, just an octave up. If you already know your bar chords, it's the top of your E major bar chord at the 12th fret. This is a very interesting sound in a lot of early blues songs. You'll hear this a lot, sliding into that. Why is that? So a lot of times in early blues songs, they might use open tunings, like an open E tuning, where you could use a slide and play up at the 12th fret and get a chord sound. Uh, this is simulating that. We're just putting uh, the second finger here to do the top of the E chord, and as we slide into it, it's very similar to what a slide player would do as well. So you see that these are triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the last time we play it, we slide it off and then open strings. So let's try that again. Notice I'm doing all down strokes. Very common, very easy, and all we have it here on this lick is doing the same thing twice. You can use it in any song in the key of E and it's gonna sound fantastic. In this one, we are using our pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale up at the 12th fret here in the key of E. Uh, our first note is on the 14th fret, that is an A, and we're gonna bend that a full step. So it sounds like a B. Anytime you bend a note, you need to have a target note. What am I bending to? Am I bending a half step, a whole step, or even farther? This is a whole step. So we're gonna bend that note to make it sound like this note. Bend 14 to make it sound like 16. Now, when you bend, you're gonna be collecting the other strings underneath your fingernail. So you don't want the strings to pop up over your fingers, right? You want them, you want to collect them all. That way you can keep them silent. So you don't have a lot of that kind of stuff happening there. So then as we bend up, our next note is a B note. That's 12th fret on the B string. That's part of the E chord. And then our final note, is on the high string at the 12th fret, that is an E. That's the strongest note that we're playing over in the key of E. So we have. You hear this 
Johnny B and tons and tons of blues music. In fact, right now you should start working on this because if you're going to play blues music at all, you're going to be playing this at some point. Notice I'm doing all downstrokes again. We repeat that three times and now we come to the second measure. So we have this 14th fret, our A note. This is going to bend up to our B again. We're going from a weak note to a strong note. Then we let go of that and play 14 again, this time not bending. Then we play 12 on the G string, that's a G, and not bend that one, and then play the root note. So instead of moving forward, this time we're moving backwards. Back the scale. So basically what we're doing is we're taking this minor pentatonic scale, we're using some of the stronger notes, we're bending into the stronger notes, we're outlining the chord, and then we're bending up, and then working our way back down the scale. But notice that we end on this note. This is really important. This is an E. So you're going to see in most of these licks, we're going to end on the strongest note. If you're in the key of E, E is going to be the strongest note, and that's a little punctuation at the end of the sentence. Okay, this is a lot of fun. This is called a trill. A trill is when you take two notes and you move back and forth with them really fast. In fact, a lot of times you'll use hammer-ons and pull-offs between the two notes. In this instance, we're using the second fret as the main note and the open string as kind of the, the, the secondary note, the note that we go back and forth from. And this is something now, as a beginner, you should start to work on a little bit, moving back and forth. You pick the first note, then you pull off, and then hammer on back on. Notice I'm not picking anymore. Everything I'm doing is kind of like I'm flicking my finger down towards the ground. Now what you're probably going to notice is that a lot of these strings want to ring out. If you look at this hand, I'm resting on all the strings that I don't want to hear and I'm only letting the string out that I do want to hear. If I was going to practice this, I'd start it slow. And over time, gradually increase the speed. And see how long you can do it too. After a while, your finger's going to get tired. And if you've got an acoustic guitar or something with big strings, it's going to be even more difficult to play. But you hear these. You hear them a lot. They sound awesome for blues. And as a beginner, it's a great time to start learning. And then we go to the third fret of the low E string. Uh, and that is in the scale pattern. That's the second lowest note. And then we're going to end up on the D string second fret. That's an E note. So see this? We've ended on an E again. How important that is. So it sounds like we're going to be going down to the low note. But we kind of fake them out. We go to an octave up of that E. So instead of going to the low E, we go to the one that's the next one up. So all together. Okay, and lick four. This one is a lot of fun as well. I play this all of the time. If we take a look at that pattern that we're using, the minor pentatonic pattern one, that's one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. You notice we have a lot of ones there and they all kind of hang out here at the 12th fret. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bar three of them, the D string, the G string, and the B string. We're gonna put our first finger across them. Now that's a pretty cool sound as well too, but if you notice on the tab above, there's a little bit of a bend there, like a quarter step bend, not all the way to the next fret, but we're bending it slightly sharp. 
something you hear in blues all of the time. It's a really cool sound um, and it gets your ear. It, you really pay attention to something like that. So uh, these three notes, this is a D, a G, and a B. Uh, if you notice, if we played those open, those are kind of the notes of a G major chord. The three strings that are in the open G major chord. We're just doing the octave of that up at the 12th fret. And that goes back to our next note at the 14th fret on the D string. That's an E, that's our tonic note. And then we're going back one note in the scale. This is a D, this is the flat seventh, and then back up to the root. So we're playing part of a chord to the E, back to a D, and back to an E. And then we repeat. Notice we're ending on the E. We're in the key of E, we're playing over an E chord, we're ending on an E as punctuation. And then I stop and then I go again. Okay, in lick number five, we're introducing a new sound. This is something called the blues scale. We know the minor pentatonic. If we add one note to that scale, this note right here that was in between 12 and 14 in our scale pattern. So we have one, four, one, two, three. We've added the second finger there on the A string. One, three, one, three. Now we're gonna do add another note. This is an octave of that, the same note, but higher. We're gonna add our pinky on the G string to the 15th fret. So it would be 12, 14, 15, 12, 15, 12. Very cool sound, very cool sound. Uh, something you hear in blues all the time. That's why they call it the blues scale. Our lick here, we start with 14, that's our E note. We go to the next note of the scale. That's our G at the 12th fret. Then we're gonna play the 14th fret, that's our A. So root, minor third, fourth, now here's our blue note. This is the 15th fret on the D string. This is a one above our fourth. This is the sharp four, or you could call it the flat five. And that's as far as we get. Then we work our way back down. Ending on the E as we have on all of these licks. Now we repeat the same lick. But for the last note, we go for the we go for the fake out. We go for the high E instead of the lower E. And I do a little rake across the strings there, which is always kind of cool. You mute with the strings with your right hand and then only let that one note out as you go across all the strings. Let's take a look at lick six. This is important. You hear this, it sounds familiar. I know I've just played it for you. You've heard this sound before. It is a kind of a boogie woogie bass line pattern that's played in a million different songs. Uh, I just did the, the E, the one over E, the one over A, and the one over B. When you play blues, those are the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. In the key of E, the one chord is an E, or an E7, the four chord is an A or an A7, and the five chord is a B or a B7. And you notice this first lick starts on an E. That works, of course it works because we're in the key of E. But our next note, we're gonna slide up to the fourth fret there. That's a G sharp. That's another chord note. That's a note that's in an E chord. Uh, so look, we're outlining notes in the chord with this little bass line. Next, we have our second fret on the A string, that's a B, also in the chord. So the first three notes are outlining this chord. Now we go to the fourth fret, that is a C sharp, that's the sixth. And then we go to the uh, E, which is another tonic note, the root note of this chord. So it's chord note, chord note, chord note, sixth, 
and then back to the chord note again, back to a strong note, lots of strong notes. So this bass line is basically outlining the notes in a chord. That's why it sounds so good. You hear it in a million songs. But what I've done is I've done this for each of the chords that you'll find in a blues. So the next chord would be the four chord in the key of E, that would be an A7. And look what we've got, we've got an A note, the open A string, fourth fret, that note's in the A, that's a C sharp. The next note is an E, that's an A, that's another note in the, in the A chord. Then we go to the fourth fret, and that's an F sharp, that's the sixth of the chord. Uh, but then we go back to the root again. So we're basically outlining the notes in the chord that we're playing over, this time just over the A chord. Okay, so let's look at the third measure. We have the second fret. I'm gonna put my first finger on that, and that's a B note. And we're gonna be playing over a, a B7 chord here. So we're gonna play two, uh, that's the B. Then we're gonna go to the sixth on that scale. I'm gonna slide up with my third finger to that. That's our third of the chord. That's another note in a B chord. Then we go to the fourth fret on the D string, that's an F sharp, that is another note in the chord, to the sixth of the chord and then to the root, just like all the other ones. So basically we're doing the same thing in three over three different chords and these happen to be the chords that you're gonna come in contact with when you play the blues. <laughs> hear the chords going by as we're playing. I hope so. Okay, so now lick number seven, we're getting away kind of from the utility licks and kind of, we're looking at players like Elmore James or like John Lee Hooker, uh, things that you'll find in those styles of blues. And so we're here, we're still in E. Uh, we're up at the 12th fret here with our E note. So that's our strongest note. Uh, we play it twice, then we go up to the next note of our scale pattern, which is the 15th fret, that's the minor third, and then go back to the root again. That all happens before the, the, the strong note of the next measure. So it's like one, two, three, bam, 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 bam. It's kind of a pickup to when it really starts. One, two, three. Ba, 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 ba. You can play that along with me. One, two, three. So that 12, that last E, that stays for a whole beat. That's a quarter note. But then we have, we're working our way back. We're working, um, we're starting on the high E, but we're working uh, where our first finger would be on the back side of this pattern one. So we have 12th fret, which is E, 12th fret, which is B, 12th fret with a quarter step bend. That's a, that's a G that's being bent up a little bit. Uh, it's a very blues sound. If we bent all the way up to a, um, a half step or a whole step, this is just a quarter. This is a little bit of a bend. Just taking it out just a little bit. So we're really going along the back side of the scale pattern and ending up on an E. Okay, let's take a look at lick number eight. We're using some double stops here. Um, we're gonna go to our B string, the second to last string towards the floor, we're gonna to go to the 15th fret. And instead of using my third or fourth finger there, I'm gonna put my first finger there, okay? And uh, what I'm gonna do is now, my second finger naturally kind of hangs over the 16th fret of the G string. I'm gonna push that down too. These are two notes from the scale pattern. Uh, just, I'm using it, using two separate strings instead of playing them on the same string so I can play them together. And we're playing these in triplets. One, two, three, and I'm sliding into it a little bit. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we do that three times, three strums each. One, two, three, two, two, three, 
three two three. One two three two two three three two three. And now we're gonna move back. We're gonna play um, the fourteenth fret with our third finger here, kind of like an A chord. Okay, we're taking the two notes from a, a bar-shaped A chord. And remember, in our blues, we had a, an E, an A, and a B. So an A chord's going to be in there. And then we're going to go back to our 12th fret on the, the back side of our pattern with that little quarter step bend again that we used in the last one. And end on an E, like we've been doing for every single one of these licks. With a little vibrato here. I'm doing... Just a, just kind of a shake here. So you can see some wider vibratos. You know, um, I don't want a wide one here. I'm just kind of rocking my finger back and forth to give it a tiny little vibrato. Okay, in lick number nine, we've done a little bit of bending before, mostly quarter steps. We're getting into some full step bends. Um, and let's see here, we're gonna start with the 14th fret on the G string. We're gonna use our third finger here. This is a full step bend, which means we're bending it up, this A, to make it sound like a B like we did before. So we're gonna use our third finger, put the second finger behind it to give it a little strength. And we're gonna bend it up until we can match a B note. Now you're gonna run into the other strings. Remember to collect them under your fingernails there. We're gonna jump up to the high E, that's our strong note, to the B, that's another note in the chord. So we have, we're outlining the chord again, notes in the chord. But now we're gonna jump up to the 15th fret here, the highest note in our scale pattern, and give that a just a little bend, a quarter step bend. Not all the way to the next note, or all the way past it, just a little bit. And notice I moved my third finger up there and put my second finger behind it. Right? And that's gonna end up back on an E. Now, I'm gonna start again. This time, the same note, the full bend like we did before, the A to try to make it sound like a B. But now I'm going to release it and play it again. So it's 14 bent, 14 normal, 12. That's our G note. That's another note in the scale pattern. And then ending on our root. Whole thing. And I'm giving it a little vibrato too. Okay, let's take a look at our last lick. You'll hear this one as a fill between chords because it's in open position. It's easy to get to. And if you remember from the other lick when we went all the way high and played a double stop here, we're gonna take that same idea, but just down here in open position. And we're not gonna play them together. We're gonna offset the notes. We're gonna use a hybrid picking for it as well too. Our second finger is gonna go up to the fourth fret on the G string. We're gonna pick that with our guitar pick, but then we're gonna put our first finger on the D note that is the third fret of the B string, and we're gonna use our, our middle finger that's not being used and pull that. So we have a pick, a down pick, and then a pull. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide this back into position, back to our scale pattern. So we're gonna slide back from four into the two with our second finger. And then we're going to play that same string, but open. And then we're going to do our little A chord shape that we did before. Open strings and then root. Thanks for playing along today. Remember, all my members at Play Guitar Academy get access to everything, the tablature, the guitar profiles, and the backing tracks for all of these videos. But don't forget to download for free my big four scale worksheet. It's gonna make everything easier for you. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great practice, and I'll see you in the next lick video.